This video is sponsored by Alpha Draft, where you can play fantasy esports like Counter Strike Global Offensive. They have a number of tournaments up there. No doubt they'll have the major Dreamhack Clusion of Poker, which is coming up in a couple of weeks. And if you want to use your expertise about the game to decide which players you think will perform the best, potentially win money if you're good, because that's what you do in these contests of all different pay scales and entry fees and numbers of players who play, then go ahead, alphadraft.com. It'll be a link in the description box below where you can go and play. Now, speaking of using your expertise to assess who the best players are, for my money, not Alpha Draft's money, for my money, Device from TSM is now the best player in the world. This is a conclusion I came to <clears throat> after watching TSM win PGL Season 1, which I realize is a confusing name because they had a, a season before that, but that was technically called the kickoff season. So PGL Season 1, the one they, the one they won a couple of weeks ago in Romania, TSM won it without dropping a map. They went 6-0 and zero in maps. And it was at this tournament, that observing device, I realized actually he's probably the best player in the world right now. Previously, that title was held by Olaf Meister, Olaf M from Fnatic, and he held that for a good long while. I remember really around the time we started calling him the best was around them winning their first major with that lineup, which was in March of this year. And he held it right up until, I'd say, yeah, I mean, obviously now that I'm dubbing devices the best, I mean, in theory, up until now, but I think reasonably up until at least the, the major after that, around that point in time. Because for that period of time, what's key is not only was he the best player, but no one else could really quite challenge him. No one else had the consistency to show that they were as good as him, and then as good as often as him, and to re return to being as good as him. You think of all the other candidates you had at that point in time, and they all had hot periods, or they'd have a really good match, or they'd have a good tournament, but no one could ever quite maintain the level that you need to be the best player to show that I'm the absolute best in the world because the best player can have one tournament off the idea is he's the best nearly all the tournaments he enters which overall was really the case for Olaf Meister for a lot of that period of time when Fnatic obviously were winning a lot of tournaments making the final of almost every tournament and always making at least top four so it's understandable why he, he maintained that status that throne for at least something like yeah six or seven months he's still a very good player Olaf Meister it's just that you can see that his level to a degree has slipped off a bit. He doesn't have as many monster performances. He doesn't have the same kind of clutch performances he always did on certain maps. I remember he used to just carry all those cash maps, as I mentioned in my article about him. And as Fnatic slipped a little bit, they're still a top four team. They're still a team who have the chance to win at tournaments and are going to be in semis and finals. But you can see that as he kind of, for me, this last era of Fnatic was defined by being carried by Olaf to a degree. And then you'd have Crims and then you'd have Flusher taking turns to prop it up and, and make sure there's enough frags. But it was having the best pro in the world is what helped define the last six to seven months of Fnatic. So for me, that kind of era of Olaf, he, he's still a very good player. He'd probably still be a top five player for a long time to come. But for me, Device has edged him out now. And part of the reason why is because Device finally represents someone who can match up in all the criteria you need, who can be part of a winning team in terms of his, he, he's the one, the primary reason you're winning, can have that overall consistency to be consistent over a whole tournament, be the best player on your team in the server and in the whole tournament, and then to do it tournaments in a row, and then to keep returning to doing that over and over again, not just do it for one tournament, then have two tournaments off, do it this tournament, this tournament, miss this one, this one, this tournament. So the thing about Device is he has now leveled up to a degree of consistency that I don't think he ever had before. And it's possible we haven't even seen in CSGO if you're talking about over the last seven or eight months, at least. I mean, Kenyas, when he was absolutely on fire at the beginning of the year, had a great degree of consistency. He wasn't playing for such a good team, so admittedly maybe he didn't play that many maps against elite level competition online as some of these guys do all of Meister device because they're always going so deep in tournaments. Yes, at the beginning of CSGO, Get Right was phenomenal for a lot of tournaments in a row. That was a different era though, in many ways a less competitive era. But now, if you're gonna talk about device, this is a guy where you look at his overall consistency and it's absolutely incredible. Like over the last three months of lands he played in, I calculated some stats for you. So over the last three months of lands, he's played 50 maps and he's got 999 kills over those 50 land maps, which averages out to 19.98 kills per map. So over his last 50 maps in a row on LAN, he's almost exact, I mean, if you round up, that's 20 kills per map. In general, in CSGO, 20 kills per map is the status 
of like an elite superstar level player. Yes, you often think of the superstar player, you think, well, 20 kills isn't very much. You'll be having 25 kills, 30 kills. Yeah, but the idea is, yeah, the, the same guy later on might have a game where he has 14 kills. So when you average it out, it's going to be around 20 for the superstars. I'm talking about the top five players in the world, not even just stars, like not like the top 10, the top 50. We're talking about the superstar elite carry level players. Because the idea is, if you can do, as Device did here, play 50 maps in a row on LAN and give your team 20 kills a map, you're gonna put your team in a chance, a position to win in pretty much every map, almost. Admittedly, you can do that and lose if your team totally fails and everyone else across the board does badly. But if everyone else does an okay job and you get 20 kills per map, they're gonna, you're gonna have a chance. Your team's gonna be winning a lot of maps. Your consistency as a team's gonna be very good because your consistency as an individual is very, very good. So those tournaments, those last three months, count in the Ace of Predator Masters, where TSM finished in last place, IAM Gamescom, where they got smashed by Envious in the final, ESL won Cologne, where they lost to Envious in the semi-final, the Fragbite Champions Showdown, which was the, the Season 3 and Season 4 champions, Fnatic and TSM playing in a show match of five games, where you had to play all five games, and TSM actually lost that one map to four to Fnatic. The ESL, ESEA, Dubai Invitational, which they lost to Vertus Pro in the final, Dreamhack London, they lost to Envious in the final. And PGL season one, they just won, beating Virtus Pro in the final, beating Virtus Pro in the upper final, and beating Fnatic earlier on in the tournament. So that was a very stacked, very difficult tournament in terms of you had to play three elite level, world championship level teams in three best of threes. Now, of those tournaments, he the five fifty maps he played, only three maps out of fifty did he ever get less than 15 kills? That's the level of excellence and consistency Device has been at. Now, out of the 50 maps, there were 20 maps where he got more than 20 kills. So he went above the, the kind of line of excellence in his average. And of the 50, there were only three maps where he went above 30 kills, which is quite interesting because again, you think of some superstar and star level players in CSGO and actually sometimes, they'll have monster games, right? They'll have like a 36 kill performance. They'll have like a 40 kill performance. We think of some lesser players who do that. But what's interesting is those players statistically wouldn't average out to the same level of excellence as Device does. And the fact that, yes, he only very rarely goes above 30, but he almost never, in fact, the same amount of times he's gone above 30 is the same amount of times he's gone below 15. And he's had tons of games, 20 or above, and he's averaging 20 kills. That just shows the level of consistency though, that every game, it doesn't matter the opponent, doesn't matter whether his team's losing, doesn't matter whether it's a bad tournament for him, doesn't matter whether it's a very good tournament, but they're place facing extremely difficult competition at all points in it, doesn't matter whether he's playing in finals, whether he's playing full five, five map best of five series, which he's done more than once within this period of time. Doesn't matter what the circumstances are, you can pencil this guy in for his average of 20 frags. And that level of consistency, it's it's actually deceptive because normally it is the guy who gets the 36 kills who we look at and who dominates with the open. We go, wow, what a fucking incredible player. Like a simple type guy. Or it's the guy where he gets the 21 kills, but they're all like, one's a four kill and one's a 1v3 and one's some crazy three deagle kills. They're the ones we look at and we think, okay, wow, what incredible skill. It's easy to see that they're playing fantastically. But then again, you're not looking at all the games they have off. You don't notice when they're not doing very well. And so you don't realize that actually, in his own way, Device is dominating the game right now. And the way he's dominating actually reminds me of a very famous basketball player from the 90s and 2000s, which is a player called Tim Duncan. And this player was the... Technically, he was the uh, power forward for the San Antonio Spurs, but actually for the most of his career, he essentially played the center position. And from this position, the great thing about him was, it, it's funny that the numbers even work because 20 points per game is the kind of star level usually in the NBA. That amount or more is what you need to be like a star level player in terms of scoring. And he was the guy where you could every match 20 or more, 20 or more, every match you could pencil him in. But the thing was, the key thing was, he never usually had huge performances. He only had a couple that were like monster 40 plus type performances, whereas some of the great scorers would have crazy games where they'd have 50, kill, 50, 50 points rather. The key thing with him was, he very rarely would let you down. He'd never go super above. He would just be so often in this band of consistency where if you play as doing that every game, you're gonna be in amazing chances to win. That's why his teams, as well as other factors, like having a great general manager, a great team, you have to have a great team around you to do this. But the key thing is, once you've got the great team around you, this person's gonna be the engine of your team. He's gonna keep you ticking along, he's gonna keep chugging along, he's gonna keep giving that performance. That means that if the other parts are there, your team's gonna have a chance to win almost every game you ever play, or in CS terms, every map. You're gonna have a chance to win almost every series you ever play. You're gonna have a chance to win almost, pardon me, every tournament you play. And as a result, 
you're going to have incredible consistency. You're going to make a lot of finishes. You're going to make a lot of finals. You're going to win a lot of tournaments. You're going to make a lot of top fours, which we can see that TSM has been able to do. They've made them make all these top fours, all these big performances. Now, what's interesting as well, to show the level of consistency and excellence that device has reached, just consider this. Up until the earlier part of this year, one of the main things, a characteristic we would have described device as is a choker. He was the guy, more than anyone else in the team, where when Dignitas, or even before that Copenhagen Wolves, or now TSM, when they got to the big quarterfinal, they got to the big semifinal, when they were playing some other elite level, world champion level opponent, he'd be the one who'd choke. He'd be the one who'd come up short in terms of kills, couldn't have the game impact, who'd drop off in the third map after being amazing in the second or the first map, or maybe even the first half of the third map, and he'd drop off in the second half of it. He'd always be the guy who'd struggle. That's exactly one of the areas where he shored up his game and become an absolutely superlative player. Now, even when TSM loses, even when sometimes they get wrecked on maps, even when they lose the overall series and have to play a full five games, he's still averaging this incredible level and playing at an absolutely superlative level. Consider some of these stats for you. So in the ESL Dubai Invitational Final, it went all five maps versus Virtus Pro. And at least one of these maps, they got wrecked on, on train. Over this five map series, he had 103 frags, which is over 20 frags per map average, it's 20.6 actually. And there's no member of Virtus Pro over those five maps who won the series, remember, and even wrecked one of the maps, who actually got to outfrag him over this series. He outfragged everyone on Virtus Pro, man for man. At Dreamhack London, they played Envious in the final. They lost in, in a close final, two close games, very competitive games. He averaged uh, uh, rather, he got a total of 40 frags over the two maps, which obviously is directly 20 frags per map average. Again, he's done it in a losing performance where you've won zero maps there, and you've got your 20 frags per map. In the PGL, this recent tournament, in the upper bracket final and the final, he played Virtus Pro again. Over these four maps, he got 98 kills. Now, that's even more incredible. 98 kills, that's 24.5 frags per map as an average over those four. I mean, then you add in the other games they played at that tournament were against Fnatic, in theory the best team in the world, right? The winner of the two majors in a row. So adding in all of the frags for the whole tournament, he got 146 frags in six games, which is 24.33 recurring frags per map over the whole tournament, over all six maps. He got an average of 24. So you can see that in this championship level winning performance, it's even better than the amazing average he's already at. Another thing that's interesting, as you're noticing here, is not only in, in losing performances or big matches is he performing incredibly. In fact, in winning performances, he's performing absolutely world-beating god-tier level. Even in losing performances, he's one of the best players in the whole server, even including other players on the other team who end up winning the match. Very, off, very rare are they ever outperforming him. Then you add in the fact that he was the guy where he's having these performances not only in losing performances, but against elite level competition, against Envious, the team that counters his, against Fnatic, the best team of all time, the best team of this era, the best team in the world theory, still in terms of the rankings, against Virtus Pro, this incredibly dangerous team who'd beaten them at ESL Dubai, who's, who's had all these incredible performances, who has the Virtus Plow, where they, they take over games. Doesn't matter who he's playing, this guy dominates against all competition and always gives a minimum of a very good performance. That's why he's the best in the world. What's interesting is he manages to con dominate with consistency. It's not just with crazy games. It's that he's always there in the game and he's always putting up these frags and giving you a chance to win. In that sense, it actually reminds me of something interesting I saw the other day. I was reading the tennis subreddit. I, I enjoy watching that game because the high-level competitors there, it's, it has some similarities to CS. They meet at all these tournaments over and over again. You get the storylines of them battling. They all have very well-defined st strengths and weaknesses and you get to see how they match up. Well, the best player in the moment at tennis is a guy who's utterly dominating the whole world right now is, is uh, Novak Djokovic, the Serbian, and he's an absolutely incredible player. But someone made this really interesting point that I'll kind of get, make the point because to me it applies to device, which is that when you watch Djokovic dominate, it almost doesn't really make sense in your brain because of what you're used to thinking of in terms of tennis, in terms of how someone would be an exceptional player. So what's interesting is he said Djokovic doesn't have a monster serve. He doesn't have this killer serve that'll win points outright like Karlovic or Ryonic. 
the, these are the guys who I mean these aren't the best players interestingly enough but they are, they are the flashy players who, who have this godlike serve where when it's going they can win the whole games with it very easily and be competitive as a result he doesn't hit crazy winners he doesn't hit these ones super insane ones up the line or inside out forehands whatever it might be like someone like Federer even to this day in his old age does where they hit the craziest winners you can do from any like from defensive positions on the court they hit winners that are aggressive win attacking winners he doesn't do that really that often he doesn't even get the miracle gets that someone like a Nadal does where they get to a ball and then they get this insane shot onto it and they just get in and you think wow how's that even possible he doesn't do any of these things yet he dominates the game utterly and that's because he the key thing about Djokovic is he's just so patient he's so consistent and he's got every fundamental aspect covered and as a result just playing what looks like basic tennis but it's actually extremely world-class god tier basic tennis all the time at every point of a game and in every situation means that that consistency is going to put him ahead of people on points on get matches on games on sets on match on tournaments and no one can hang with the guy as a result. You might beat him for one match, but he'll still perform very well in that. You'll have to perform extremely well to beat him one match. And then forgetting that, you're not gonna outperform me over two or three tournaments. And it's like that with, with device right now to me. Someone else can, like Snacks could have a better series or a better couple of maps, but it's gonna be very difficult to even do that. And even so, you're not gonna outperform him over two or three tournaments, which is like, so in, in that sense, he's at that all of Meister status where yeah, Guardian could have a crazy couple of tournaments. Yes, yeah, Skadoodle could play really well. Yeah, other players, Snacks, etc. These other players could have times, simple, Kenny S, they could have times when they were really, really good, but it didn't matter because ultimately over that period of time, no one could outperform Olaf Meister. No one could perform better than him on that as often and with as much skill. And that's another thing about when you look at the level of device right now is that in, just like Djokovic he's dominating with his mentality and with his skill set he's fixed his mentality he's overcome a lot of those problems I don't know that he's going to overcome them permanently I mean TSM still has never made the final of a major never won a major which is something that probably they do need for their legacy to be like considered even a chance to be the greatest ever but he's definitely improved it from where he was this choker and where he had these issues and now he's this very consistent player he's a very elite level player and a player who even performs well in, in losing in losing matches and kind of knows what his role is now and how he's going to play regardless of what the opponent or his own team does which is a great quality to have as soon as you can define your style and play to it you're going to be working with your strengths as a result and in terms of skill set you have to understand this whenever Olaf Meister was the best what I always used to stress to people was He's not just the best in one area. He's not just the best for frags. He's not just the best at making a crazy shot. It's very simple and very easy for even a layman to see that and to think that that's what makes the best player. What made Olaf Meister the best was that he was the best in all areas, almost, that you could have in the game. And his all around game just was above and beyond anyone else's. Well, that's also where Device is right now. And that's why it's almost fitting that he's the one who's inherited this mantle of the best player from Olaf Meister, at least for this period in time. We don't know how long it'll last yet. But at the moment, he's in the zone and he's in his peak era of play here where he deserves to be acknowledged like the get right shocks, Kenny S. I mean, very briefly, Crims, and his admittedly was a brief one, so who knows if how long the devices will last yet. Then obviously go into Olaf Meister, these guys who were the gods during their period of time. So the thing about devices, he really can do it all. He's got the most complete skill set in the game. In terms of rifler, he's an extremely good rifler and on both sides. Extremely good consistency, precision of shot, accuracy, pretty good spray actually. He's a guy who at all ranges is very good. In terms of orping, he's an elite level orper. Forget his rifles and he's one of the top five orps in the world. And yet as a rifler, he's obviously one of the top five rifles in the world. Only for me, only him, Olaf Meister, and then depending on if he was in a team and he played long enough, Simple would be in that category where they'd be the best at both, or at least top five at both. And in terms of Simple, I can't put him there right now because of his circumstances. Then you look at a guy like Device and you have to say, okay, so there's rifles, there's the ops, pistols. This guy's absolutely one of the best pistols we've ever seen in CSGO, and particularly in, at the moment, if they're very, very good. Not only is he good with all the basic pistols, He's one of those guys where I've always thought it's quite, you, okay, there's many guys have become excellent with the CZ or have adapted to become good with the Tech 9 more recently or even have a fantastic Deagle and obviously devices someone has a good Deagle. But one of the areas, to me, the pistol that's always shown the most skill is the P250. And this guy's one of the best P250s in the history of CSGO and right now could be arguably the best P250 in the world. Really good 
headshot accuracy, really good ability to like half spam and still put a lot of bullets into people, really good pick off ability, just a fantastic P250 player. It's also just as if to complete it out. When the SMGs first started coming in, TSM and Device were some of the first people I saw abusing those SMGs. Really good SMG player, you've seen with a Mac 10, whatever it might be, fantastic with those SMGs. So the thing is, usually the type of player who has the skill set of a device will be that crazy erratic player who will hit the, the amazing shots, who, who it's just all about the skill they need, but they tend to not dominate in terms of pure impact kills or with consistency. And that's where device is different. He's taken his skill set and he's applied it so completely in a way that some of those other guys might abuse their skill, might rely on their skill, like, like people like in the past Scream or I think at times... I think at times people like Forrest have sometimes abused that as well. They haven't always had the smartest positioning. They haven't always had the mentality to consistently be able to perform like that. This is where Device is, for me, he's set himself apart from all these other players. And as a result, he's a key reason why TSM is poised legitimately to be the winner of the next major. They, they're one of the absolute favorites, one of the strong favorites there. So to me, he's the most reliable player in the world. You know he'll give you those 20 kills per game, win or lose, or whatever the opponent does, whatever his team does. He's the most skilled player in the world. You look at the total skill set, and aside from Olaf Meister and some other bit simple if he was on good teams, it's hard to find anyone who can match up in terms of the breadth of his skill set or the depth in each particular area. He's the most complete player in the world. He's just got everything that you want in the game. And as a result, for, me, for my money, he is the best player in the world.